How's it going boys and girls? Data here and welcome back to the Minnesota Wild Franchise Mode episode 24 here in the second half of the 2025-2026 regular season. In the last episode, we had a pretty decent start to the year, going 23-19-7 through our first 49 games. Kirill the Thrill Kaprizov went off, as always. Going on pace for a career year, I believe, though, this year, especially of all years. Yeah, he's going to break that uh, career high of 91 at this pace, I believe. 30 more points from that. Marco Rossi doing well, but after that, the team starts to drop off a little bit we had a few concerns about some of the plus minuses on defense some of the depth scoring we had goaltending concerns especially with Connor Hellebuck over here so there were a lot of suggestions there were there's a lot of possibilities that we can do lots of fun trade possibilities as you can see by the title of this episode as well and I am very excited to hop into it too many comments to read every single one but I do appreciate them all being left there and thank you for the time that you take to write them out I replied to them in the comments but I'll just try and highlight some of the major ones heading into the second half of the season where we got to shake a few things up if we are going to be Stanley Cup contenders because we're a good team, but we're lacking in some very key areas. Starting off with Apo, there was a lot of talk about Russ Griffin, the centerman over on the New York Rangers. We'll touch upon him a little bit more later, but he says that we should definitely try to get him because he would be an amazing player who could be the first or second line center even. Lambert could then be a top winger or a third line center, depending if Russell is going to take that spot on the second line center. Because Brad Lambert, we were thinking about where is he going to go? He has 77 faceoffs. We don't want to move him for sure, but we could, sorry, by trade him, but we could move him to the wing. Uh, Apple would also look for that new head coach we were talking about that got fired from a different team. And he would look good since he has a good team fit. Thank you very much, Apo. Building on the thoughts about Russ Griffin, we go to Hoot Hoot Boy, who says, aside from having to change the power play, which we'll do in a little bit at the top of his paragraph, he says, getting Griffin seems like a no-brainer to me. Even if he becomes only a third-line center, he would be a penalty killer that we're badly missing. And he's only 22. Give him a contract for a couple seasons that makes him stay as an RFA. Do whatever we want with him. And if it means getting rid of one or two prospects, it would mean that we could definitely start being better in the playoffs as well. Could do a mega trade where, where we're trading Seogren and Lambert to, for a, a big deal with the Rangers. I don't know if we're necessarily going to do that, but I like the way you're thinking, Hoot Hoot Boy. Now, if we did go and get Russ Griffin, he is an RFA, so we wouldn't be able to put him into the lineup just yet. That's definitely a possibility in this episode. But we want to focus as well on the team right now. Michael says that he was on the edge of his seat for that Chicago game. There was a few comments about being on the edge of your seat for that Chicago game that was a really fun one in that simulation despite the loss he would recommend that we keep the team as is and ride the wave under this coach and then reassess in the off season if those contracts we took on to stay salary compliant or one-year deals that we could use that money to then sign some superstars in free agency maybe even goaltending consider the next draft prospects to see if we can replenish what we trade out etc etc can't wait for the next episode thank you very much michael so it's it's difficult because in the one sense we say okay let's just ride it out we have good players we we know that they're good let's just trust them but on the other side of things we have a comment from mike that says this team needs a shake-up i think you should absolutely get a new goalie try for saros if possible we should move greenway down to the third line and get a different power forward for the top line such as kachuk or cousins he'd also suggest shaking up the defense as well whether that would be through heronic or shabbat etc we cannot let this season slip away and then a little ps he was going crazy in that chicago game Thanks, Data, and go wild. Very much appreciated, Mike. Speaking of team shakeups and different positional changes, Francois says that Hellebuck is not the problem. I think we should just put chemistry above all other stats or overall. Talks a bit about searching for that plus five bonus, and that we should also go all in to acquire Shabbat and then trade Krug to mix things up with the D. We can't pass on a player who fits all of our lines. Krug's a plus two, Sergachev's a plus 17 at the moment. You don't need to look anywhere else. If you want to get a new coach, his stats are really amazing so and our coach is really old so it wouldn't be the craziest thing to go out and get him not sure when if or when that would happen also jason zucker fits all of our lines so that would be a great fit even if he would be on the fourth line as an 83 overall really nice for a playoff run maybe even coil before patrick kane because patrick kane was on the block griffin looks awesome really mobile and we would try if it doesn't cost more than a second slash young prospect even oscar clefbaum a few different options and then on to the last YouTube comment. Schneebauer says, I would get rid of Krug for another offensive defenseman with first line fit. 
That would also help Botter slash Ellington with the chemistry. Do they both fit for penalty kill? Not sure. So Sergachev would be your second line stud that should also get power play and first line PK time. If you can pair him with a green green, he'll get a plus three, whether that be with an offensive or defensive defenseman. If Greenway fits the third line, he's the best value option there. Awesome contract, wouldn't get much better besides an ELC. And we should also, and also to just let me know that it is possible to get a plus five with a two-way forward if there are only two yellows on that line. So that's just to keep in the back of our heads for chemistry. Replying to that comment was Andrew, who said that although Krug seems to produce, he doesn't help grow help doesn't help with the growth around him, as we're seeing by Botter not really growing. But that might be more of a Botter thing than anybody else. I'd see what you can get for him while his value is still maxed. Maximizing the line fit in chemistry is the name of the game for your young stud D. Couldn't agree more. Still think that maybe making a move for someone like Cousins on that first line would be the right move on offense. Kaprizov, Rossi, Cousins with plus three would be lights out for years to come if you could get them all locked up. Moving Greenway to the third line spreads the scoring as well. And I also asked him what his thoughts on Kachuk were. He said that he likes Kachuk as well, so it depends because Cousins is a lot of value. And then I mentioned how Tori Krug is still really good right now, despite the only being the plus two. He has 30 points in 49 games. I feel like we could go one more year with Krug and finish it off, although there have been some voices for Krug to get traded. Andrew says he hears me. It's a tough decision to gamble the system for a shot at the cup, whether that be prospects or the people that we have right now. I'm always for waiting another year for more kids with upside that may fit better, but then again, how long can you really wait? Moving over to the Discord server now, massive comment as always from Addy. Love it, Addy. Understandably, I can't read every every word of it, but basically getting the gist that Hellebuck has not done well and the season as a whole is kind of hinging on the goaltending according to him. That is why things haven't gone too well. We need to trade him ASAP, but we never know if youngsters will sim well, so I think we should go for someone who can be a long-term option. For me, it's Philip Gustafson, who's an 88 overall at 4.8 million, although it's an expiring contract. Package Hellebook and some prospects for Gustafsson. Call me crazy, but I think Botter and Sergachev have really cemented, cemented their places into the team as they've been good with solid plus minuses comparatively. If we were to get a defenseman, it should be Timothy Liljegren, although this move is really, really unnecessary. So I think we should revisit him in the off season. So on defense, I think nothing changes unless we could package Tarky with some other prospect to get Liljegren, then slot Botter to the third pair. That would hurt growth as well to have a lockdown d-man on the third what i found is defensive defensemen are more versatile because either way you're not gonna get many points just good plus minuses now this may seem counterintuitive but we know that lambert is struggling on the third line maybe you could try him on the first line if he fits well try and give him a little jump start and getting, you know, reignite that flame. Uh, after all, Lambert last year was killing it. Griffin's also good as a long-term pickup. And there's many good rental options, such as Lundstrom, Evgeny Sveshnikov, Patrick Kane, Zuccarello, Coleman, Athanasiu, Zucker, Ben, lots of options. So thank you for those thoughts, Addy. The only thing I definitely agree with that uh, making a big change on defense may not be super necessary at this moment. But for the goaltending, we do have hopefully Morozov as our starter next season. And then we also have in the system Kozevnikov, Wallstedt, and then future guys down the road. So I don't think a long-term goalie solution is what we're looking for. That's exactly why we signed Hellebuck to a two-year contract when we got him in free agency. We expected to lose him after two years. Just that we expected him to go to free agency and not that we would trade him away. But the the, the same sentiment still remains. What does he want? Only 5.5 million, huh? For, yeah, but I don't think that's going to happen. Hef's comment is up next saying that as much as I don't want to say it, Greenway's production so far this season just isn't good enough for a contending team. If he's not at least point per game on line one, it's bringing the team down. I wouldn't be opposed to keeping him and trading a power forward further down the line, but regardless of who you move, we need to get that big new face. We need that big new face on the first line to get us into gear. As for the situation between the pipes, Hellebuck has got to go. He's just one of those goalies that just never plays well in the sim. I've seen conflicting things. My advice for a replacement is not to focus as much on overall and instead focus on his historical save percentage most definitely, especially in the playoffs if available. That will tell you much better how he performs in the sim than his rating. That's definitely something to remember when you're playing franchise mode. Don't look at the overall, don't look at the name, not even just the poise. You gotta look at historical save percentage if it's there. Going over to Tic Tac, he says, tough season, but good news is that you're still in a playoff spot. 
think it's worth making a handful of smaller moves to hopefully solidify the playoffs once you get in who knows what happens but it ensures that your younger pieces continue to develop so team's main issues three main areas goaltending number one hellebuck stinks but the defense is pretty good in a situation like this we would move hellebuck for someone like kemper or bobrovsky as a backup to morozov he's having a good season let him run with it and see what he can do it might even push some decent growth out of him too if he struggles use the veterans to plug the holes as needed both kemper and bobrovsky have low trade values so you could probably even get a prospect slash high pick out of those teams for hellebuck number two greenway sad to see sad to see but he's just not cutting it on that top line, as we just said. So he should be a point per game plus since those other two players are on his line. Hurting the offense, hurting the power play, wouldn't be a bad time to start thinking about acquiring another first line winger. Does doubling back on Kachuk make sense? Finally, got to talk about Brad Lambert. The low franchise potential is exciting, but the low probability is concerning. Doesn't appear as though he's really fitting in with the team. And offensively, your team is too reliant on the Kaprizov Rossi connection right now. You mentioned that you can't see where Griffin fits in, but I think it's staring us right in the face. Griffin should replace Lambert as the additional top six center. As an 88 overall, he's an instant upgrade over Lambert, would provide elite scoring, and would improve your overall team defense. Because you can't play Griffin now, it's probably an off-season move, but I think but I it's the obvious one you make. I would also consider making the move at the draft instead of at the deadline, like I said earlier. Keep nursing Lambert, see if he grows and potentially has more trade value, then use him instead of Sjogren as a part of a bigger deal to get Griffin, or use Sjogren to get Griffin and use Lambert to get that top six winger. So thank you, Tic Tac. What I'm really hoping to do is I don't need to trade Sjogren or Lambert in the Griffin deal, and they're des the Rangers are desperate enough that they want to just trade him. So thank you for all those comments, and with that all synthesized in my brain, this is what I've come up with. I'd like to get a first line power forward number one, put Greenway to the third line. Second, I'd like to get Russ Griffin sooner rather than later so that he doesn't go to any other team. He's our second line center next season. Lambert can play wing, maybe replaces a guy like Fiala who goes to the third line. Next line, next year, the third line becomes Fiala, Kostin, and Kovanov, something like that. Third move, I'd like to make a starting goalie change and potentially question mark fourth move looking at Thomas Shabbat or Timothy Liljegren on defense. But if we were to do that, I'd probably wait. I want to do those first three trades see how the team performs and then decide from there so let's get straight to that trade screen so first things first is the power forward upgrade dylan cousins ton of trade value not on the trade block i've tried to make it work it's just not going to happen i haven't gone crazy to try to make it work but i've already given more than i've wanted to and they're still rejecting it so i don't think dylan cousins can happen he's on too good of a contract and he's just too good of a player and you know what that makes sense However, if we just scroll one down to the Calgary Flames, our original thought about Matthew Kachuk over this offseason is still in play. He is 87 overall, making 8.12 million for the next two and a half seasons. I like the possibility of Matthew Kachuk very much. He's at 30 points in 50 games this season on a not very good Calgary team. He has been like a 50 kind of point guy, but that's because he didn't have Sean Monaghan or Elias Lindholm with him. At the beginning of the sim, he was closer to the 60 point mark, and I think with Kaprizov and Rossi, and getting a plus three, he would be fantastic. So we're going to try and acquire Matthew Kachuk from the Calgary Flames. I have the trades that I want to make kind of, it's kind of already filled out in my mind. And this one's going to cost us Wyatt Cross. I'm not happy about trading Wyatt Cross. He's medium elite, 63 overall. He was a fourth round selection, a sniper out of the U.S. system. He's a pretty solid prospect, I'd say, for a third round selection. He has actual uh, capabilities when it comes to potentially making the NHL. 35 points at the moment. The only thing that I don't like about him is that he's a sniper with one and a half shooting at the age of 19. Doesn't have to be four, you know, three and a half, four stars, but... Only one and a half. I'm not sure if I see the growth. I It'll come. I think he'll make the NHL for sure. And that makes this trade even more realistic. Because I really like this prospect in the system. But it's going to cost him in this deal. And you might be saying, oh, why don't you trade Montgomery? Why don't you trade Hextall? Because they, they're not going to make the NHL. Trust me, the deals are in my mind. They're coming. They're coming. So Hex, uh, Cross is going to be one of them. We have to give, give up a roster player. So that's going to be uh, Lodina, who hasn't been playing down in Iowa. Uh, has he played at all? No, he hasn't played at all. He's a bottom six prospect, third round pick in 2017. And then I also have to throw in draft pick. It's going to be a 2027 second round pick. 
and then the flames will give me back what I'm hoping will be like a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, maybe even, a, let's just throw all this in. I tried it with a third and it wasn't working. Like I never do the trades to make them go through like necessarily because then I'd have to restart the, the save file and all that stuff. But I try to see where it's getting to the place where they're like, it's just a little bit low for us and stuff like that. So the second round pick is necessary. Uh, unfortunately, if I just give a third straight up for Kachuk, they don't want to do it. So a second, and then I'm going to try to take back fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, see what they'll do. So Calgary, what do you say about this deal? Isn't sufficient at all. Okay, just a sixth and that'll go through. So that's pretty much all we could ask for. Matthew Kachuk, and we get a fourth and a sixth round pick in 2027. We give up a second round pick. We're going to give up a lot of picks, but we'll get some back later. Trust me. And we also give up a very good prospect in Wyatt Cross. And Lodina is going to go as well. The Flames are a losing team. They need to recoup some prospects and picks. I think everybody's happy. Matthew Kachuk, welcome to the Minnesota Wild. I'll quickly fix up the roster, then we'll get to the next one. Next up on the docket is the trade for Russ Griffin. Russ Griffin, 88 overall, 22 years of age, no contract. RFA had massive issues with the Rangers. They didn't want to sign him, and he's not playing this season. He is sitting out. He was the eighth overall selection in 2021. Five star defense, four star shooting, four, pretty much four star everything. Four and a half senses, three and a half for puck skills. Aside from that, he has been a tank, I believe. Yeah, six, in his first full really good season. He It was a slow first couple seasons, 18 and 17, but then 61 points last year with the Rangers. He wanted to get paid and they were not willing to pay him. He is from Liga. Is he... Uh, is, you know, he's not Finnish, he's Polish, I think. So a Pole playing in Finland, I believe. Either way, the Rangers offered us Russ Griffin in exchange for Sven Sjogren, who is an 83 overall at 20 years of age. He was our first round selection, 15th overall in 2024. He has had fantastic growth. 28 points in 34 games in a uh, A or A plus caliber league. I don't want to trade Sven Sjogren. I really want to make this deal work because we're never going to get a guy like this on the block willing to be traded. The rest of the league is, is strapped for cash. We have the money, we have the assets, and we have them on the ropes because they're not going to get him signed. They don't want to lose him to unrestricted free agency. So I want to try to send them Hextall, a prospect who I don't think will grow, Camden Hextall, Fourth round pick in 2025. I don't see him growing. I want to get him. And then I also want to trade Burakovsky, who hasn't really been playing for us. He's been a healthy scratch for a while. He had two goals and seven points in 24 games. I'd like to move those two in exchange for Griffin. Now, I don't think that the value is there just yet. They're not very interested. So we're going to have to send in some draft picks. Now, the good thing is we do have some good picks here. We have two seconds in this year's draft. So I think sending them a second is pretty solid in terms of trade value. I don't know if we could get something back. Just throw it in there. So would you like a second round pick this uh, this year? Because we also have Anaheim second. In exchange for Griffin, two sixths and a seventh. Oh my goodness, they would do that. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see. Can we get a fourth round pick? What could we squeeze out? Oh, what? I don't know. Fourth and a seventh? What do you say now? Okay, let's just do it. Fourth and a seventh. We're already getting a great deal. Thank you very much, New York. Russ Griffin, the Rangers didn't want you. We are happy to have you whenever you join the team next season. This is huge for us. I didn't want to let it go to the draft or any or any time closer to the to July 1st in case another team were to swoop in and get it done, especially since he's on the trade block. He has four star physical, even as five foot eleven. I am pumped for Russ Griffin whenever he is ready to play on this team. But with that taken care of, there's actually one more deal I want to do before the goalie. It was a depth trade I wanted to do that was suggested in the comments. It was for Jason Zucker. So I look, I took a look at all the guys, all the depth possibilities that were there. But Zucker being, uh, actually, what, I thought he was in the block. I guess he's not in the block, but we should still be able to get him. Uh, for Jason Zucker, it would just cost a draft pick, I think. So I was thinking a third round pick. I think that would be fair as a deadline kind of deal. I'll give you a third now. I have like a third and you give me back a sixth. Does that sound fair to you, Philadelphia? Too far off? I, could, I would be down to do it straight up even. Or even just a seventh round pick. Uh, isn't sufficient at all. Really? Just a third round pick? No, isn't sufficient at all. Really? Huh. Well, they're 33. I guess, well, I guess we'll scrap it. He's 33. 50, the, the Flyers are 33, 15, and 3. And they no longer have him on the trade block. So I guess they don't want to trade him. But the Flyers were literally trading everybody. And now, no, wait, whoa, they, they had, what? I don't know what changed in Philadelphia, but last time we looked, Couturier, Provorov, Timoshov, Dano, Hurdle, Athanasiu, Sanheim, Zucker, Stetcher, they were all on the trade block. So I don't know what happened there. 
Uh, I guess we could just not get any depth. But now, you know what, I'm gonna have to reevaluate all the trade blocks in the NHL now, because I guess they've changed. Maybe Jamie Benn is actually a good idea. Power forward, try and get him a Stanley Cup. Uh, one year left. Yeah, that could be a possibility. I'm gonna take a quick look around the league. And you know what, actually, before I even leave the Penguins, Jonathan Taze is super tempting. This is brand new as well. 82 overall, 93 face-offs, expiring deal, 37 years of age, 95 poise, exactly what we would need to go on a playoff run. So Jonathan Taze, I think, is the front runner right now, but I'm still going to do my due diligence around the rest of the league. It's actually insane that Brady Kachuk is on the block at 85 overall, literally almost no trade value. On an expiring deal, that just doesn't make sense for us right now. Greenway is our new third line power forward. I don't need Brady Kachuk to be there on an expiring deal, but that's just crazy to look at his trade value. Uh, no one really in the NHL that has a lot, like there is a couple of interesting options, but Jonathan Taze takes the cake, I think, easily. And we could get him for even cheaper than it. Well, you know what? I'll still give Pittsburgh the third round pick. They're a losing team. They, they're selling off. I'm not sure why the NHL's trade blocks change in that time, but I do have a couple trades in store aside from just this uh sorry one more depth trade after this taze one that i just realized uh third for taze and a fifth and a sixth isn't sufficient at all i was just a seventh in 2027 just for fun yeah you, do, you know what that sounds good to me we believe this transaction will contribute to our success here in pittsburgh so we're accepting your trade offer jonathan taze not the first depth veteran center that we get on this team we've had patrice bergeron we've had anze kopitar and now we have jonathan taze now here is something else very very interesting if we go to find trade, I was thinking about possibly moving Mason Shaw because I realized that he has a fair amount of trade value and we're not really using him. At 81 overall, 27 years of age, he has top 9 potential. That's a lot of value for top 9 potential. And he hasn't, he's only, you know, 9 points in 24 games. He's been fine this year, but we just don't really have room for him on this team. And I feel bad keeping him so buried when he could be so good. So we could just let Mason Shaw go and fly away and live his life. And we say, okay, what would the NHL say to some trade pot? Oh my goodness. We could get Patrick Kane and two draft picks for Mason Shaw and reunite Taze and Kane. There's a lot of options of like, here's a prospect and a fourth, prospect and whatever, even a second and a third. These, like these are prospects that are like 50 overall. I saw a lot of them aren't really that good. And the ones that are better... I mean, our, we have a good prospect pool. We have players who are going to be on our team for years. I don't think we need to crowd up the system with more prospects who are going to be fighting for ice time, and we won't be able to give it to them. So getting Patrick Kane from the Hawks, oh my goodness, that would be insane. They're a losing team. Kane wants to reunite with, uh, with Taze. He is a simulation monster with 53 points in 51 games. Expiring deal. Fits the top six. I don't know where we'll put him. We'll find something for him. He'll probably play the bottom six, probably third line, but just to say, I think this deal just has to happen because Mason, we don't, we're not forced to move Mason Shaw. We don't need Patrick Kane, but I think this team would just be pushed over the top, way over the top with Patty Kane in the lineup. Plus, the Hawks are willing to give us a fourth and a fifth round pick. They're high on Mason Shaw, as they should be. It hurts that we're trading Mason Shaw to a rival. We'll, you know, that'll probably hurt us down the road, but I'm I'm okay with it. Patrick Kane, and let's say a bit low. Okay, you know what? We'll go for the two fourths. May oh my goodness, Mason Shaw, we wish you the best. I really love you a lot, but it's just this deal was too right. I am hot, happy to accept this proposal on behalf of the Chicago Blackhawks and we consider it a done deal. Patrick Kane, welcome to Minnesota, Bello. And we just have one last deal that we want to do before we call it a day on the trades, and that is to go get a starting goalie. So I looked at the entire NHL. I looked at goalies who are on one-year deals, who are at least 82, 83 overall, who have 85 or more poise. And it comes down to Sergei Bobrovsky and Carey Price. So Bobrovsky, he's on the trade block, which is good, and he is, uh, sorry, he is 83 overall, and he has fringe starter potential. Meanwhile, over on the Canadians, Carey Price, also on the trade block, but he has starter potential, and he's 83 overall as well. I compared their numbers. We had a powwow over on the Discord server. Carey Price's numbers are slightly better, plus his potential is better. Let's try and get Carey Price a Stanley Cup, my friends. On his last year of his deal, he has been playing fairly well on a bad team. He's playing okay. I don't think the numbers are that bad. I think the 90 poise is super helpful. And I think, you know, he doesn't... It's, you know, we've had our ups and downs with Carey Price in simulations. 
but I think that trading Hellebuck to the Canadians for Carey Price will get them to retain some salary, will get them to give us some more value because the value is way in our favor. So let me see if I can work something out. So to make the salary work, we need the Canadians to retain 2.25 million on Carey Price. And also just to note, there are some other suggestions, like we said, for Gustafsson or for Saros and other goalies who are playing very well right now. But, you know, the, the Avalanche are like a top five team in the league. Saros just won the Vezina last year. I don't think it would make a lot of sense to trade them Hellebuck for Saros. Meanwhile, trading, uh, making a trade here for Carey Price, they get a new starter in Connor Hellebuck. We get to get Price to try and get us a Stanley Cup and simulate a bit better. Plus, they get to get rid of that contract and we can get some picks out of it as well. I don't think we're gonna be able to get a first round pick, no way. But I think we should be able to replenish some of the picks that we just traded away, right? In those last few deals that we made. So now we're down to a first of our own. We have Anaheim second, and then we have some fourths, fifths and everything. So if we could get a second round pick from Montreal, maybe even a little bit more. I looked at their prospects, wasn't super impressed with them. There was this guy, Rome, Jeremy Rome, 79 overall playmaker, but I don't know. I don't know if I really see the room for him. Like I said, I don't know if I want to get a lot of good prospects who I won't be able to commit to having in the lineup. He does have two more years in entry-level deal. Maybe Rome's a good option. How close is it with Roman? No, they have... Then we have okay, so then we have more than 45 skaters. I think just picks would probably be the best way to go here. So if we could get, like, two second-round picks, I'll give them some picks back even. That would be pretty solid in my opinion. So take New York's fourth this year, and I'll give you a couple fourths next year as well. And that just balances out the picks. We don't want to have too many picks in our system. So here's Connor Hellebuck and three fourth-round picks for Carey Price and two second-round picks. Not quite there. Just the second? Even for the second. Doesn't meet our trade block needs at all. You have no good goalie like, overall-wise. You want to trade your starting goalie. I'm giving you an 89 overall and picks. And because of the second-round pick, we're getting stuck in the mud. Bergevin, he really makes you work for it. Oh, man. Let's go. Let's try this now. A second with a fifth and two sixths. Trade rejected. Consult the block again. Just a sixth. Consult the block again. Just Edmonton second. What? It's all it must be just because of the salary retention. They're going crazy for salary retention. You know what? Forget the salary retention. I'll give you a player instead, and you can just take salary by taking another contract. How does Travis Hamannick sound, eh? I'll give you Hellebuck and Hamannick, and you give me Carey Price, a second round pick, and I'll see what other picks I could milk out of here. How about just a second and a third? Does that make sense to you? Nope. Just the second straight up? Nope. Oh, they do this. Okay. A fourth, a sixth. And what else can we get? Can we get one more seventh here from the Canadians? Where they do this. Bergevin, thank you very much. All right. So we'll trade Connor Hellebuck and Travis Hamannick to the Montreal Canadiens for Carey Price to be our starter for the rest of the year. A third round pick from Winnipeg this season and their fourth, sixth, and seventh round picks next season. Is it a good deal, deal really in terms of trade value? Not really, but you have to look at the truth here. Hellebuck's value shouldn't be that high and prices should not be that low. So I think it evens out fair enough. We'll go ahead and do it. Thank you very much, Monsieur Bergevin. Carey Price, let's get you a Stanley Cup. Let's fix this roster and let's see how this team is finally shaping up. So to make everything salary compliant, we have to send down Kevin Hayes. I don't think that's really a big deal. We'll be over the salary cap, really. So by sending down $7 million and calling up $4 million, we'll be over the salary cap. Okay, so I'll have to do some jujitsu here to work it out. Which means I have to send down Comtois and Chekovic as well. So hopefully no one gets claimed. Okay, perfect. Let's work it out. Okay, now here we are with the new look Minnesota Wild to finish off the second half of this season. First line, Kaprizov, Rossi, and Matthew Kachuk, our new power forward. Second line stays the same, Fiala, Lambert, and Boldy. Uh, I'm going to try bringing back uh, Lambert to the second line. Kovanov was switched up to the second line, but I'm going to try to switch things around now that the team as a whole is a bit different. Maybe that helps out Lambert. Maybe not, but I don't know. We could always just switch Kane to the top line. Nah, it wouldn't help chemistry. We'll see what happens. I just want to give Lambert a chance back on the second line. Third line is Greenway, Kovanov, and Patty Kane getting a plus three. And the fourth line is Kaut, Taze, and Kostin. So Kostin's going to have to do a little time on the fourth line, unfortunately. He, he does get some, like, four-man power play time, I think. But uh, for the most part, it's going to be tough for him to get some ice time because, all, you know, Taze and Kane are both leaving next season. 
And for the moment, that's just how the cookie crumbles. So Costin, Taze, and Kaut on the fourth line. Kane can't really go there. Doesn't help the chemistry as much. Defense stays the same as always. Special teams. We've gone from plus three, plus three to plus three, plus one. Because we put Lambert back onto the first unit. And it doesn't quite give... He has two yellow dashes. But we also want to give Patty Kane some time. We want to get Kachuk some time. Kuch and then Costin loses his time. Fiala at the point here. Maybe Fiala could change. You know what, if anyway, yeah, he does get second line minutes. So it would probably make the most sense to give Costin some ice time on the power play to make him happy. And you know what, there you go, gives it a plus three. All right, that works out, plus three, plus three. Four-man power play. Penalty kill, we could go negative one with Marco Rossi or a zero with Jonathan Taze. I know he's only an 82 overall, but he's a defensive mastermind, and we'll hope that that makes all the difference on the penalty kill. Switching this around gives it a negative. We could switch, no, that would give it a negative as well. Could switch bot. Yeah, I know I'll put Botter on the top pair and put Ellington help out the second unit instead. Three-man PK, Taze is there again. And then we fixed up the extras, the shootout lines and all that good stuff. Carey Price, our starting goaltender with the Minnesota Wild to finish off this last season of his career. Well, of at least of this massive contract that he signed. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of veteran presence here in Minnesota with Kane, Taze, and Price. Also picking up Kachuk, we got Griffin who will be here next season. Speaking of Griffin, we could in theory go and extend him or at least offer him an extension. No, actually no we can't, we cannot because it's past December 1st, you can't even offer it. Patty Kane, if he wanted to extend, it would be, yeah, it would be expensive, so I don't see Patty Kane staying around. So that's a long intro to the episode. At least it was action-packed with some big trades. We still have 33 games left to go here in the regular season, and it's all going to start here against the Pittsburgh Penguins, who are 19-28-3. They just traded us Jonathan Taze. Let's see what we can do up against them with the new-look Minnesota Wild. First period, 2-1. Gustafson starts, opens up the scoring, but then Klim Kostin, there he is on the fourth line, comes back, and then Matthew Boldy scores as well, past Linus Allmark. 2-1 after the first period now. Second period, 3-2. Patrick Kane, in his first game with the Minnesota Wild, scores his first goal with a team that is not the Chicago Blackhawks, goes to a rival, no, no less, and gets a goal on in his first game. Radish scores for the Penguins. We're up by one heading into the third period. Come on, Carey Price. I need you to stand strong. And uh, a little extra scoring wouldn't help either. And then Marino gets one past Price. It's three goals on 21 shots against Carey in his debut here. Let's go, boys. We have a tie game with five to go in the third period. Who's going to be the hero for me here in Minnesota? Who's going to be the hero before overtime? Nothing. So we're going to head overtime and we'll go in and watch. We're actually on the road here. Let's see who can finish it off. Here we are in Pittsburgh at PPG Paints Arena. Wild and Penguins 3-3. Carey Price wants to get that dub in his first start as a Minnesota Wild. Kane scored a goal. We had Costin uh, on the fourth line, maybe assisted by Taze. Price is going to hang on for the faceoff. No, we're actually going to give up to Rossi. Okay. Starting up a rush here with Kaprizov and uh, Krug. Poked away by Rust, but Krug recovers it along the boards. He's pinned. Don't let it... Oh, no. Again, so fishes it out. And he's on more than a breakaway. He has half the ice to himself. Big save from Carey Price. That is the veteran presence and the experience that we needed from him. And he'll stop a one-timer there as well and hang on. Boldy and Lambert are, are out now against Gord and Poulet. Carey Price standing strong. Look at him in that blue paint with the number 31. John Marino over to Poulet. One time for scores. Yanni Gord. Man, he just got the goalie moving from side to side. The defense just falls apart. Look at the passing. Just where's the coverage? Four goals on 28 shots against Carey Price in his first game as a Minnesota Wild. Not gonna, you know, gotta take it with a grain of salt. We'll simulate maybe 10 games or so. And then we'll check out how those players are doing. We'll also, I'm going to go in and change the jersey numbers to what they should be. So I don't ever get upset by the in-game sim of jersey numbers not being right. And Derek Stepan on waivers here from the Rangers after that game. He uh, 78 overall, one year, one million. Interesting, but doesn't fit and I don't need him and I don't need that cap hit either. So on the topic of numbers here, I gave Jonathan Taze number 19, which meant that Matthew Kachuk couldn't have 19. So I gave him number 7, because that was his number when he played for the London Knights. 
So we'll pull him back to 19 once Taze leaves, but Taze gets seniority for the moment. Let's start simulating into the month of March, and we'll see what we can do. Game 10 with these new players would be up against the Montreal Canadiens, so that I think that is a perfect time to pause, since that'll be Carey Price up against his old team. So we started off with a 4-3 loss against the Penguins, 4-1 win against the Bruins, lovely. Panthers, we lose to them 4-2. Home and home against the Dallas Stars in the first game, we we win 2-1, to one. Zach Parise back in Iowa. We'll try to get him into a game before, well, at least in the playoffs. We want to try and get him to play sometime. There you go. Parise has 19 points in 23 games in the AHL this season. He was out for a while. So back-to-back -back wins there against Dallas, 2-1 and 3-2. 5-1 win against the, against, the, against the Washington Capitals. Big 8-3 win against the San Jose Sharks. Against the Winnipeg Jets, we win 3-2 in a shootout, and then a 5-4 loss against the Avalanche. So not as much to, at stake when we're up against the Jets anymore with Connor Hellebuck out of our lineup. We signed him explicitly for to just two seasons to help us out. He did nothing for us. He had a decent first season, didn't come through when we needed him though. Numbers weren't great. It looks like the Canadians are doing very well at 30, 21, and 7. But since we made those trades, we are 6-2-1. and one. Yeah, 6-2-1 and one through those nine games. And now we have game number 10 here against the Canadians. So 6-2-1. and one. How will game number 10 go? We'll go to the Hawks as well right after. So let's do it. First period, 0-0. Zero, zero. Second period, 3-1. Ooh, let's go! Patty Kane on the power play. And then a minute later, even strength. Marco Rossi on the power play. And then Ryan Paling on the power play. So three out of the four goals so far in this game on the power play. We're up by two here in the third period. Carey Price playing well against his old team so far. 4-1. Matthew Boldy, another power play goal. Brad Lambert, 5-1, adding it on against Connor Hallibuck. Five goals on 20... Six goals on 23 shots against Hallibuck. As Lambert gets another power play goal and his second of the night. Just eating up the Montreal Canadiens here. I'm very sorry, but we had to do it. Power play Canadiens to end the game, and we killed it off. Big, big performance from Carey Price with 28 saves. Brad Lambert, two goals and an assist. Patty Kane with two goals. And Matthew Boldy with one goal and two assists. You absolutely love to see it. Seven, two, and one through the first 10 games with those new changes. We are 30, 21, and 10 on the season. Let's check out the stats. All right, so Kaprizov still doing great. 69 points in 59 games from him. Rossi, 63. Patrick Kane, down to an 82 overall. Couldn't care less. Six points in 10 games. Very solid for playing third-line minutes. We will take that with a massive smile on our faces. Matthew Boldy picking it up. 51 and 59. Krug with 40. Matthew Kachuk now. Let's see how he's done on that first line. Please. Oh, yes! Matthew Kachuk, 9 points in 10 games. That is what we needed from the first line power forward. That Greenway, I'm sorry, was just not g quite giving us. Greenway down on that third line is now at 39 points. Still a very good season from him. Sergachev, 36. Brad Lambert waking up now with 34 and 59. A little bit more. Fiala's slacking a bit, but 18 goals is very nice. Kovanov, 30. Kostin, 28. Jonathan Tay is what we want to see here. Down on that fourth line, he has scored six points in ten games? What an absolute animal. This guy just loves hockey. He just lives and breathes the ice. He knows it. Let's check out Carey Price since he's done... I don't know if he started all ten games. And he did not, but... Oh, wow! 7-1-1. One, one, a 9.28 save percentage and a 2.09 goals against average. There's some vintage Carey Price. Yes, that is what we want to see exactly what we wanted to see just keep on simulating i have no reason to stop we're 22 29 and 8 sorry the hawks are 22 29 and 8 we are 30 21 and 8 7 2 and 1 in our last 10 games let's keep it up first period 3 2 hawks all right there yeah you know what we knew that was going to happen mason shaw power play goal against his old team i really it really hurt to trade mason shaw that really hurt me but to get Patrick Kane on this team, it was for a big playoff run, you know, I think that it was worth it. But either way, Kaprizov scores twice, Debrinkit scores twice. Both teams have only eight, well, we have three goals 
on eight shots against and two goals on eight shots for. Second period tied up at three. Very nice. Kevin Fiala, thank you very much. Gave him a slight call out last when I was looking through the points. That's his 19th of the season. Shots are tied at 16. Eight shots apiece through two periods. And Matthew Boldy gives us the lead. We were down 3-2. Now we're up 4-3. We've seen the Hawks a lot. And that's his second of the period. And that's two goals in like four minutes, a uh, matter of fact. We're up by two. Power play for the Hawks now. We kill it off. That's exactly what we like through the first, well, through the first, through the through 55 minutes with just under five to go now. Minute to go, and that'll be a huge dub. From down 3-2 to a 5-3 win, we broke through Jordan Bennington. Matthew Boldy, two goals and two assists. Yes, three assists from Brad Lambert, two goals and assists from Debrinkit, but Brad Lambert, let's go, buddy. Man, oh man, 8-2-1 in our last 11. We'll sim to the trade deadline. I don't think, I'm 99% sure that we're not making any trades, but we'll sim to the deadline. We'll check out what's going on on that date as we'll go through games against the Senators and the Avalanche. Senators, we beat them 5-2, to two, and then, wow, we lose 7-2, to two, I think, I saw against the Colorado Avalanche. That's a massive L, but I think that was probably against Morozov. On the block today, we got top 50 Bo Horvat. We got Isaac Lundstrom, who's an RFA. We got Domi, Theodore, Truba, Zadina, Atkinson, Pulak, Hamilton, Lias Anderson. The defense has been pretty solid, and if we were to go out and get a defenseman, I think it would cost us. Like, we could go and do something big. We've been thinking about Thomas Shabbat. We've been thinking about Timothy Liljegren. In theory, could I go to the Ottawa Senators and say, hey, you give me Thomas Shabbat. I'll give you. You get. Sorry. You give me, yeah, like I said, Thomas Shabbat. I give you Braylon Montgomery, and then just the the value is pretty close. But we are way over the trade uh, trade the maximum salary cap. I don't know why it's not telling me my actual salary cap because I don't actually have eight million. I'm pretty sure we're right at the cap. So if we're taking in eight million, we probably have to trade about eight million, which means like Montgomery and like Kevin Hayes, and that's not a lot of value. That probably hurts our value, in fact. And yeah, so that would work. But then we'd still be way off if we offered this. They'd say it's not very interesting, doesn't meet our block, and the value isn't there whatsoever. So we'd have to throw in some picks. Uh, of course, my thing goes away because I got offered some. Oh no, it's just a trade alert down at the bottom. I've seen there's been a lot of Shea Theodore to the Hawks. What to the Hawks? The Hawks are dead. They trade a second and a third for Shea Theodore. Okay, maybe they're thinking about next year. See, maybe this could work. Kevin Hayes and a second round pick from Anaheim with Braylon Montgomery who was a second round pick in 2024. Very weird stats with 99 shot blocking, but 73 defensive awareness. I don't see him staying on this team. Uh, and we go out and get Thomas Shabbat. If I'm gonna offer this, I'll be pretty shocked if this goes through, but I don't think you can say, like I'd rather scratch Sammy Vatanen and get Thomas Shabbat, right? Ottawa centers are a losing team. They get a good prospect, a good pick. Ottawa, what do you say? Trade rejected? Okay. All right, all right. Doesn't meet the block particularly well. I was, you know, I was going a bit delusional, maybe. Uh, I could throw in a third round pick just to give it a chance to say I've done the, I've, I've tried, but I'm not going to be trading like a first round pick or something. Doesn't meet the block very well. Sixth round pick, no. So I don't, even a second, a third value is not there whatsoever. So to get this trade done, we'd have to trade some more pieces. I'm not quite sure what they would be. We could trade some guys down here. I don't know. There's like some random prospects with low value, like Tim Romano, uh, sorry, Trishan Romano, uh, for 93 slap shot accuracy. Like, but does he have, like, does this make a big difference? Does this go anywhere? Ray Romano's son. What do they say? It doesn't mean, yeah, value's not there. So, okay, you know, we'll give it a shot, but it's not going to work. So, we'll go ahead and just back out of the trade deadline and we'll just see what trades were made around the NHL and we're content with our team. So we got Matt Calvert here on the on the on uh, waivers, 77 overall. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. No, thank you. And now we can go check out some of the deals that were made around the NHL. So just scrolling through them quickly here, I see Rasmus Anderson, Ferlin, Lafferty was traded, Alex Nedeljkovic, uh, Jan Bednar, Akil Thomas, Matthew Phillips. Not seeing any huge names. Nikita Zaitsev, Sunny Milano. Some prospects, Elias Anderson. The big deal was the Shea Theodore and P.O. Joseph. Wow. For a second and a third. I'm not sure why the Hawks were acquiring them, but hopefully that helps them down the road, I guess. Well, maybe I don't. Maybe not, hopefully. And then Florida got Armia, Subban, and Dewar for Alexi Zamnov and a second, a sixth. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and stop there. Well, stop. There's nothing. There's no other trades. So we'll just go ahead and continue simulating. And we will move into the final little stretch here after the trade deadline. 
it's full steam ahead in my mind. So let's go to the month of March. And let's go see maybe a good team. And you know what? Let's go see Nicholas Enkvist and the New York Islanders. That's who I want to see a game against. We lost 5-4 in the shootout to the Stars. That just passed by quickly. Philadelphia Flyers, we beat them 4-2. And then we shut out the Hawks 5-0. Oh, Rodin is back in Iowa. He was out for a long time. That's good. So I take Parise out. I want to call Parise up. I really want to call him up so I can get him in a few games before the season ends. Now, even if I sent down Hunter Jones, who was the only other guy who could go down... It would be over the salary cap. So Parise, I'm sorry, you're not going to get to come up to the NHL in the rest of this season. He has like 27 points in 30-some games. Very well down in Iowa, but I'm sorry. I can't get you back in the NHL, my friend. We'll keep on going. 4-3 uh, shootout loss against the LA Kings. 4-2 win against the Flames. Matthew Kachuk. We took it. So now, through the six seasons here in Minnesota, we've taken Monaghan, Lindholm, and Kachuk, all from the Flames. We got shutout 2 to nothing. Yikes. Then a 4-3 shootout loss. Okay, so things haven't been going great the last few games. We are 1-2-2. Two, and two. Yeah, 1-2-2 two, and two in the last five games. Not great. So let's try and turn it around here against the Islanders. They're 42-25-4. Won't be easy, but we got to prove our point here to Nicholas Enkvist for not coming to our team. Well, for, for actually, the more to, Enkvist signed with it. It's more for, to the Islanders for playing the system and like breaking the SEC uh, financial law to try and keep that player on their team. I don't know how they did that. First period, nothing. Second period, one nothing. Kirill Kapper's off on the power play, past Mackenzie Blackwood, and we're up one to nothing here in the third period. Power play, and of course, it's Enkvist who scores on Carey Price on the power play. Only one goal and 27 shots so far. Price is playing well. Power play for us is killed off by the Islanders. Halfway through the third, and shots are 31-29, with just a few minutes left, and it's Wong putting the Islanders ahead. Classic Trevor Wong. Power play late for Minnesota. Oh, and it's killed off, but then Matthew Boldy comes through, and this game is tied at two. With 56 seconds left, Matthew Boldy ties it up. Shots are tied at 35. Oh my goodness. Time for overtime. Let's go times four simulation. Oh, wow. Can we get a hero here in overtime after Boldy got, got us to this extra frame? 30 seconds left. No, we're going to a shootout. And in the shootout, we take it. It's Klim Costin with the shootout winner. Enkvist scores, but then Fiala and Costin do as well. And we take it 3-2. to two. Up 1-0, down 2-1, win 3-2. Carey Price makes 36 saves. Blackwood made 34, but Price was just a little bit sharper in the shootout. And we'll take that win 3-2 to the final. Let's move to the end of the season here. I'm loving it. The team is playing fantastic. I have nothing left to touch. Let's just get to the end of this season and call it a day. Let's wrap it up and look at those numbers. 4-2 loss, 3-1 loss. That's a bit scary. Six. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. 6-2 loss. Okay, but then a 5-2 win. Maybe we could make a change on defense. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's just see if there, if we should. I'm thinking maybe swapping Ellington and Botter. Something like that if they need a little bit of help. Costa has Kapra's off close to beating his career high as well. We thought it was going to happen. I guess he slowed down a little bit, but there's still a lot of time. Uh, defense, plus 17, plus 18. And then we got plus 6, plus 8. And then plus 8, plus 1. Okay, so that's not really the issue. And Carey Price has been playing well. Even Morozov has been playing well. So maybe it's one of the forward lines. Or it's just, you know, it's, they weren't we weren't really, really getting blown out. Plus 5, negative 5. Ooh, Jonathan Tay's a negative 5. What's he been doing over here? He's a plus 2, though, with us. Yeah, it's not really... The fourth line's not the issue. The second line has been meh. And the first line... Yeah, it's... You know what? I'm going to trust it. Trust the process. I, I trust the team that we've built here. A few L's, but those were against very tough opponents. It was a tough stretch there. The Leafs were a very good team at 43 wins. The Ducks at 41. The Lightning at 37. Islanders, we barely beat them. We beat the Panthers that are a very good team. So you know what? I'm going to trust it. Won't touch anything. Just keep calm. Coyotes are a good team as well. We, oh, we, we got to beat the Coyotes, boys. Popovich, we got to beat them. 3-2 loss. Blue Jackets, we win 3-1. Capitals, we win 3-2 in a shootout. Let's get to 40 wins here against the Jets. Woo, 4-2 loss. 4-3 shootout win. Hold on, are we in a playoff spot? I'm a bit frightened here. Let me just double check the playoff spots here. We're in a wild card spot, but uh, are these must wins? What's going on out here? Are these must wins? Western Conference. We're in the last spot here. Who's right behind us? 87. The Blues are behind us at 87. So we got to... If we can just get one point in these next two games, we'd guarantee the playoffs. But this is a this is tighter than you'd want it to be. 
definitely tighter than you'd want it to be. And I think we're up against St. Louis. Uh, no, we just... Oh, wow. So that, was like, that was a huge 4-3 win in the shootout. New Jersey Devils. Come on. We got to get a nice dub here. Let's go against New Jersey. one nothing shutout. Woo! Whoever was in nets just delivered, and we have clinched the playoffs. We'll end it off against the Vegas Golden Knights. We're 30-38-13. We're 41, 29, and 11. Come on, let's hit 42 wins. Let's not even get to 30 losses. Let's go. First period, 1-1. One, one, Kout and William Carlson. Second period, 3-1. Stone stores, scores twice. Three goals and 22 shots. We're down by two here in the third. Let's go. Boldy, let's get ready for the playoffs. It's Cal Peterson and Nets as well. Former goaltender. Let's go. Boldy brings us within one. Let's get this tied up. Let's. There we go. Shorthanded goal from Jonathan Tays. Little preseason tune-up here. Sorry, pre-playoff -play, pre tune-up. Tie game 3-3. Three, three, five minutes to go here in the third period. Let's get that 40-second wing. Ah, oh, Cody Glass. Wait, power play late. And we don't get it. Ah, oh, that's a heartbreaker. 4-3 loss. Ah, oh, big bow. Top 50 for a reason. Three assists from him. Goal and assist from Taze. That's brutal. But hey, you know what? We're in the playoffs. 41 win season. We will take it. And has everybody played their 82nd game? Yes, they have. So let's go ahead and check out the standings before we get ourselves prepared for the playoffs. Kaprizov ended with 91 points. Oh, so I don't think that broke the record. Uh, his personal record. So the Avalanche won the President's Trophy, I think, again. We were better than the Coyotes just by a little bit. So we were the 15th best team in the NHL. It was close with the St. Louis Blues back there. Uh, Canadians missed the playoffs, actually. Kings were the worst team in the NHL. Uh, let's just look at the power play and penalty kill numbers. I didn't compare them. You could compare them to last episode, but I didn't look at them before we started. Either way, 20.5% on the power play, which definitely puts us at the top half of the league. 20.5 yep in the top half and penalty kill at 82.4 which i think also puts us in the top half right uh or maybe closer to the middle 82.4 yeah that's that's uh, just around i'd say top half by one or two teams and just around that middle so let's see the team scoring here kirill kaprizov not a new career high in points but actually no he exactly tied the 21 22 sophomore season 56 goals and 35 assists, but a better plus minus and more penalty minutes and more shots. What a season. Almost 400 shots. My, what? Two shorthanded goals, 19 power play points. Marco Rossi, 79 points and 60 assists from him. That is a new career high in points and assists. Great numbers from him. Really turned it around. After we were a bit shocked, he only scored six goals last season. He gets 19 this year, plus 60 assists. Great stuff. Patty Kane, down to an 81 overall. Couldn't care less. 22 points and 18 goals. 18 goals and 22 points in 33 games. A negative 6, though. So maybe that's something to consider. Third line uh, changeup for the Lions. Maybe. Matthew Boldy here. 74 points for him. That is a second best. Yeah, second best in his career for goals and points. As he scored 74. A bit down from 83, but not by a big margin. Just less goals. Much more, Many more assists. And many less, 20, like 19 less goals, but we spread it around a bit more this season. 74 points from him. Great job. Matthew Kachuk on that top line. He slowed down a bit. Yeah, but still 22 points in 33 games are fantastic. Plus nine as well. So I think we're very happy with that. Jordan Greenway ended with 51 points, which was a very good season. Just, you know, he, he got 57 last year on the top line. And now, or was he on the top line? But 51 this year to split time between the first and third lines. 17 minutes a night. I think that's good for him. Tori Krug got 51 points. Still at a 90 overall. So we could trade him at the draft. He would still have some value. Down from the last two seasons. But still a very good season for a 34-year-old defenseman. Mikhail Sergachev, 49 points and a plus 18. That's the highest he's gotten in a while. Yeah, since his first season with us in when he got 50 points. Back to his old self. Two goals, 47 assists, and a plus 18. Best plus minus season with us. Brad Lambert at 48 points. That was a bit shocking. Last season, he got 51 as a third-line center. Uh, sorry, he only played a lot of second-line center, but still, his overall was higher this season, and he scored less with 48. Plus minus was not great either, so that's a bit uh, nah, concerning. Fiala, 42. Kostin, 38. Kovanov, 39. Uh, passable, but not great. Uh, Fiala, 20 goals and a point every second game pretty much is not bad, but 
We just we expected more from Fial as a second line 86 overall sniper who showed himself to be able to get that mid to high 50 point range, but he's been consistently in the 40s. Kostin 21 goals, Kovanov 37 points, not bad at all for a 30 line, for a third line center. Yeah, new career high in his sophomore season here. Good playmaking ability. Jonathan Taze on that fourth line. He ended up scoring 15 points in 33 games. Nice. 14 of those being even strength, correct? Uh, no, four, 13 of those being even strength. Very, very nice for fourth line. Kaut had 20 points in 82 games. Good fourth line presence. Tarky 15, negative 2. Botter had 13 points and was a plus 13. Uh, Ellington was a plus 17 with 11 points. Vatnin in 58 games had 8 points and was a plus 6. Carey Price went 29, 19, and 7 with two shutouts. With the Minnesota Wild, he went 14, 8, and 3. 905 save percentage, 2.71 goals against average. So his numbers came back down to earth, but he played some very hard opponents and still kept a winning record, stayed above 900 save percentage, below three goals against average. I'm okay with that. I think those are solid numbers. We'll check Hellebuck's numbers with the Canadians. And Morozov turned things around as well. 11, uh, 7 and 5 and 5 shutouts. Five of his 11 wins were shutouts in 24 appearances. 906 save percentage, 2.56 goals against average. That's okay with me. Beautiful. In the entire NHL, it was Nicholas Engfist with 117 points winning the Art Ross and 59 goals winning the Morris Richard. The man is just not from this world. Sam Reinhardt had 95 points. You got Line A with 108. Sagan McKinnon, Alex Newhook, Kaprizov is up here. Sveshnikov, Mir uh, Miro Heiskanen, 87 points from him. What a season for Miro Heiskanen as he led all defensemen easily. Darlene, Riley, Ekblad, Jones, McCarr goes down. But wow, 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 87 points. And he's an 88 overall two-way D. Goaltenders in the entire NHL. Ilya Sorokin with 46 wins. Probably got himself the Vezina. Very beautiful numbers. Very, very nice numbers. And then if we start to scroll down here, do we find our good... Who's this guy? Seelovs. Archers Seelovs. 77 overall. Uh, and who else? And then we have... Look, look at this guy on the flyer. 71 overall. He played in 54 games. Yeah, why would you want to go out and get a goalie, right? Connor Hellebuck. Let's see it. There he is. There's good old Connor Hellebuck. 13-11-4. One shutout, an 889 save percentage, and 3.28 goals against average. Man, good riddance. Terrible in NHL simulations. Uh, rookie skaters here in the NHL. It was Cole Salinger with 53 points. Let's see, assist in the NHL maybe. 74 from Reinhardt, 72 from Barzil. Trevor Wong, there he is. Classic Honolulu Husky legend Trevor Wong. Uh, best plus minus 43 for McKinnon. If you look at all these stats, wait, let's see who played the most minutes a night. It was Miro Heiskanen. What a horse. Miro Heiskanen. Well, you know what? I also wanted to see Mason Shaw on the Blackhawks. I really hope he did well. Uh, so probably down. Yeah. So, yeah, you know what? That's good. That's good. He had a good uh, rest of the season. He scored 15 points in 31 games. Good for him. Good for Mason Shaw. He's a good player on a good contract as well. They're, they should be happy to have him. Looking at some of our old friends, we may be curious and seeing how they did. Uh, Matt Dumba ended up going 7 goals, 28 assists over on the Anaheim Ducks. Elias Lindholm also on the Ducks, 7 goals, 17 assists. A lot of other guys that we've had on our team before. Look at Vitaly Kraftsov's trade value. Expiring deal? Yeah, that's why. Really good con. Well, I guess it's lower now because you can't trade for him also. Tristan Jarry, he uh, is on a huge contract. When 27 16, okay, there's a good season. That's a good season. For $10 million, that's finally a half decent season. So I think we're ready to call it there, my friends. We got to see who are we playing in the playoffs, and then we're ready to call it a season. In round number one, we will be facing the Colorado Avalanche. Wow! President's Trophy winners in round one. Yikes, it will not get harder than that. Oh, goodness gracious. Avalanche, Landeskog, McKinnon, Ranton, and Arvidsson, Newhook, Bellows. Both Newhook and McKinnon were like leading the NHL in points. Lawton, Kyra, Hartman, Krejci, Force Baca, Carlson, Legend, and Chandler Stevenson. Defense, Byron, McCarr, Timmins, Gerard, Graves, and Barron. That's an amazing defense. And Yusei Saros again. They, this is a team that eliminated eliminated us last season. Saros at an 89 overall. Wow. And Donato injured. 
wow, this is not going to be easy. But I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. What should we do with this team? Should we fix up the third line? Maybe the plus minus has not been great. Maybe taste of the third line. It would hurt the chemistry, but maybe that would be best for the plus minuses. Defense, do we make any changes there? Goaltending, Carey Price is our starter. Special teams, maybe any changes to make there? Over in Iowa, we're 53, 12, and 9. Whoa, another insane season for the Iowa Wild. So I'm not going to go over their stats too much, but just to say, look at these numbers. Very good seasons from these guys. No one really running away with it, but everyone just putting it together. And both goalies standing on their heads this season. Oh, yes. This is going to be good for when they come up. We need one of these guys to be backing up the NHL next season. Unless, because uh, Morozov's hopefully our starter. Unless Carey Price wants to sign back on as a backup. We'll wait to see that. But, hey, thank you for watching. If you are new to the channel, we'd love to have you subscribe. Become a part of the team. Join in on the discussion. The link for the Discord server also in the description if you want to join in there. If you're watching this on Thursday, we're streaming the Ottawa Senators franchise mode tonight as well on Twitch at 8 p.m. Eastern. It'll be re-uploaded to YouTube on Saturday afternoon. But hey, without further ado, huge changes here in Minnesota. I'd love to hear your thoughts on them, as well as any other additional suggestions heading into the playoffs. Let's go wild and let's get it done in year number six. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.